Welcome to EQS Electric. One of the most important properties of an electric vehicle is the ability to gain range fast on longer road trips. On my green screen behind here, my uh, well whiskey cask, uh, in the background, you see a time lapse of the first DC fast charge I did with my EQS 450 plus with the 108 kilowatt hours battery pack. A decade ago, when electromobility was in its infancy, range was most often limited to 100 kilometers, so 60 miles, and this was enough for daily commuting to your work, but far too less for a ride into the countryside. With the start of the Tesla Model S in 2012, with a range of 400 kilometers, 250 miles, distances grew and long distance travel became available and the need for chargers in between on those longer distances uh, were imminent. And 2012, the first Tesla superchargers were built in California. I think six uh, were the first group of built superchargers. And in 2013, a year later, Norway, as the first European country, uh, got it first six or eight superchargers, if I remember right. And in 2014, the rollout in Germany, the Netherlands, Switzerland and Austria began. These superchargers are direct current chargers, which connect directly to the battery. And this battery runs on direct current as well. But the power in our households and the whole public grid is AC, is alternating current and 230 volts in Europe and 120 or 240 volts in the US. The onboard AC to DC converter, the chargers, converts this alternating current into direct current for the battery and the DC chargers on the road have their own converters, their own chargers in it, in its housings and they deliver a lot more power than the onboard chargers are able to and these chargers are expensive and the advantage is that the electric cars take all uh, the use of these direct uh, or these chargers to direct current in these big housings of the uh, superchargers or DC fast chargers in common. The first supercharger of Tesla had 19 kilowatts and a watt is a current of one amp multiplied at a voltage of one volt. That's called a watt and 19 kilowatts equals 90,000 watts. A kilo means a thousand and if you divide these 90,000 watts by 400 volts, which is the nominal voltage of most of the battery packs of electric vehicles, uh, you result in a current of 225 amps. That's a lot. The second series of superchargers, version 2, delivered 120 kilowatts, then followed with version 2.5 at 150 kilowatts, and two years ago, I think, the version 3 with more uh, with 250 kilowatts. And if you divide those 250 kilowatts by 400 volts, you reach 625 amps. This is far too much for the common combined charging system here in Europe, the CCS specified, the plugs are specified up to 500 amps, but you need a constant cooling for that. Tesla goes a bit over this top and after a short number of minutes, the current is reduced to 500 amps, which equals 200 kilowatts. And well, at a lower state of charge, below a third of the capacity, you can apply more than 400 volts to these battery packs without uh, killing the cells by over voltage and resulting in shorts in the cells. Yeah, so you might fall below 500 amps even earlier uh, by rising uh, the voltage. After some years of development, Porsche came out with the Taycan and a 800 volt system. In theory, the car should be able to charge at 400 kilowatts, means 800 volts times 500 amps, but this is pure theory. They have far less. A friend of mine owns a Porsche Taycan and charges with a maximum of 250 to 
260. I think there's a peak of 270, up to 25% state of charge. But you need a special high performance charger. And about these chargers, I talk just in a few minutes. And you find these chargers in Europe labeled typically with 350 kilowatts. Tesla supercharger version 3. Here you see the, uh, the labeling, the type label, shows a maximum power of 425 kilowatts at 1000 volts. I took this picture in Denmark in 2020. But in the moment, they limit the four stalls to 250 kilowatts each, but four times 250 equals 1000, and they do only have 425. So they have to divide in a special manner. I do not know uh, how they are doing it. Uh, I will try it with a friend in a few months. There is a good chance with, that with the new uh, 4680 cells that we see 800 volt packs with the Tesla. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they wouldn't have rated the chargers with 1000 volts. Yeah? The new Ionity high power charging network along European and German autobahns is owned jointly by a number of companies called the BMW, uh, Mercedes-Benz, Ford, Volkswagen, Hyundai. And uh, well, in the Volkswagen group, there is Audi, Porsche, Volkswagen, Skoda. Oh, Seat, which is Spain. <clears throat> yeah, and Hyundai. Motor Group has the Hyundai and the Kia in it. And as I said, they provide 800 volts and only Porsche with the Taycan uh, and the Taycan, oh, how it's called, uh, station wagon. No, uh, the, yeah, the, the second Taycan, uh, Audi GT and Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6. Those are the only cars in early 2022 uh, which are able to charge at 800 volts. Let's have a look at the EQS, <laughs> where this channel is all about. It uses a 400 volt nominal pack, but you're able uh, to uh, rise the voltage up to 450, I've seen so far. And it's, of course, limited to 500 amps through the CCS plug. And this power of uh, 500 amps, uh, it holds up to a state of charge of 30%. The max power I've seen so far is 500 amps times 417 volts equals 208 kilowatts. And the question is, how fast will it reach the power during the startup? And how long will it hold this power? until it has to drop because the battery is too full. Some, some cars start slow, Tesla reduces fast, and <clears throat> peak power is always the power people are advertising with. But the real question is how high or how long keep, do they keep this high uh, charging power? Porsche is able to hold the power of 250 kilowatts and a little bit above, up to 28 percent state of charge and at 35 percent state of charge they are already down to 150. Yeah. Here's the diagram of the EQS. It was my first charge after 525 kilometers. I took the data from the multimedia screen with a GoPro and you have seen the time lapse during the first part of this video and the horizontal axis shows the elapsed time in minutes. The vertical axis on the left hand side indicates the power in kilowatts for the red curve in the diagrams which follow. This is always the same for all diagrams I will show shortly. Yeah. In this first diagram, the blue line shows the state of charge in percent and the percentage is drawn on the right axis of this diagram. The charge started from 5% state of charge. I didn't dare to drive uh, less than that, uh, which equaled uh, 35 kilometers residual range, 22 miles. And I set the charger in the navigation system and the car heated the battery up to optimal temperature for the best charging speed. It was 8.5 degrees centigrade, 47 Fahrenheit outside, so quite cold. And if I uh, hadn't navigated to this charger, 
um, the temperature in the battery would have been far less and the charging speed would have been less as well. So if you aren't able to reach these charging speeds, then typically uh, your battery will be too cold for getting these results. After two and a half minutes, power of 200 kilowatts is passed and the peak of 208 is reached after eight minutes and a state of charge of 30%. So in eight minutes, they charge it up for a quarter of the battery pack from 5% to 30%. In eight minutes, that's a lot. And then power starts to drop in a quite linear fashion. If you look closer to that curve, you see a light logarithmic decline until the EQS reaches 110 kilowatts at 31 minutes. Then the battery has reached 80% state of charge. And this is the recommended normal charge of the battery pack. And you're always able to charge higher than that by setting the limit to 90, 100%. And I set the limit to 100% because I would like to collect this data for you. And for the next 20% state of charge from 80% to max, uh, it took another 35 minutes. So uh, 26 minutes to 80% and then 35 minutes uh, for the next 20%. So you see that charging at high state of charge is very, very slow. You should do that only at home where you have the night for that, but don't do it too often because that might harm your battery. So typically you charge it up immediately before you leave home. And then after some tens of kilometers, uh, your high uh, level of uh, charge will drop significantly so that the battery will collect no harm. You can again see a second but different logarithmic decline. And after reaching 100%, the car balanced the battery for another six minutes. All the time it showed 11 kilowatts as the charging power. Um, this is done because the cells do not have the same voltage after some use or sh shortly after fabrication, after assembly. And with this balancing, you make sure that the cells have the same voltage and the pack has the maximum charge or capacity in total. But fast charging is not the only thing. It is more important how much rain you gain in a certain time. Yeah, if you consume a lot, then a lot of charging does not bring you range. The next diagram shows first in kilometers and then in miles how much range you gain. Please note again that the curve starts at 35 kilometers equals 22 miles. After 31 minutes and 80% state of charge, you have 500 kilometers, 309 miles in your pack. Yeah. So we gained to the 35 kilometers, 22 miles. Uh, residual in the pack, we gained 465 kilometers and 289 miles. This results in a charging speed of 900 kilometers per hour or 560 miles per hour. This is an excellent figure, up to 80%. One of the best I've seen so far uh, in such a high start of change range. And please note that this range is real data. Not with Tesla, with these uh, typical ranges. No, this is real data, which the car collected during my first 525 kilometers of drive, 326 miles. With all this positive, there is a negative point in this. The chargers along German autobahns divide into three main categories. The first is 50 kilowatts, which is the very, very first series of chargers, very old, eight years old now. Then the next one is 150 kilowatts and the highest is the Ionity range and Fastnet with 350 kilowatts. And the latter is the most expensive in cost per kilowatt hour. If you need a biological pit stop and need more than these half an hour, you should think about using the slower and cheaper 150 kilowatts chargers. If it's stingy, yeah, probably. What do you think about using 150 kilowatt chargers instead of the 350s? Let me know and leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel. 
Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come.